Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. I'm Mark Brash, your host, aka Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Monday, July 14, 2014. And in front of you is the hydrogen electrolyzer, the VSPB hydrogen electrolyzer, again. Uh, we are repeating the experiment again for Maury King, who has asked me to run a couple of additional tests because, you know, he saw that pop and he's not convinced that my theory is correct that we have an attraction of the hydrogen molecules to the water vapor, which is a polar molecule. Um, so, Moray asks me if I can just uh, look this up very quickly. Uh, let's see, you detected a residual gas in the plastic bottle similar to what George Weissman describes. Also, you demonstrated the implosion of the plastic bottle. Yeah, we know that. Uh, here is a suggested improvement for the beaker experiment. Seal the top with brown paper from a brown paper bag with tiny openings for the gas feed tube and the igniter cable. So you can see I have the, a, a stiff polypropylene tube taped with the aluminum foil tape to one side of the jar. I have my igniter cable taped to the other side of the jar and there are just two tiny slits just large enough to accommodate the, the, um, the tube and the igniter cable. And uh, of course a piece of brown paper bag from one of these. I have no idea where these just keep showing up from but you know they, they seem to appear here you know. Uh, anyway, then uh, let, let the beaker sit for a while. This mimics the brown paper bag experiment. The, the paper bag is supposed to be porous to hydrogen, and I expressed uh, some skepticism as to how transparent the paper bag really is to hydrogen, but we'll find out. Um, by having a igniter pre-placed, there is minimal disturbance to the contents at the bottom of the beaker. That's true. Now the trick is to open the brown paper top without disturbing the gas sitting at the bottom. Uh, a series of experiments could be informative. After filling the beaker, carefully remove the gas feed tube, leaving the paper top in place. Let it sit overnight. Does the paper top, does the, does the paper top still trap combustible gas? So, as my final experiment tonight, um, I will fill the beaker again with the gas. Let it let it run for 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and then it will, and then I'll take the um, take the tube off of the hydrogen generator and let it sit overnight. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, the next experiment is to remove most of the paper without disturbing the bottom igniter cave, or the hydrogen should immediately vent away. Then try igniting the bottom contents within seconds of removing the cover. If it still ignites on another experimental run, wait longer, say one minute. I think if we let the gas intermix in, into open air too long, it dissipates. It means that the hypothesized secondary gas is not significantly heavier than air, but it's heavier than hydrogen. So um, he also included George Weissman of Eagle Research in on this email thread and uh, I'm doing this experiment for him. So tonight, uh, I'm gonna do it in reverse order. The first, the first thing I'm going to do is a test where I have filled the jar for a while, and then I will remove the paper top slowly and ignite it within seconds of removing the paper top. Of course, I will disconnect the hydrogen electrolyzer cell to prevent any of the flash from getting back into here because I do not have a bubbler. So I got to be careful about that. <laughs> that. That could be very bad. So uh, we will let this experiment run for a little while and we'll be back in a few minutes to see if it pops. All right, it's been about 45 minutes of generating gas. We're going to try the experiment now. I'll start turning off some lights.
Right now I'm working by the light of my monitors and I'll be shutting those off as well. We're going to do this in complete darkness. Um, switch camera angles here for my live audience. So you have an idea of what you're looking at. There's your there's your view. I turned off the lower monitor, so there's really nothing showing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, the pipe from the hydrogen generator and move it over to my water bubbler so there's no possibility of the uh, any flashback getting into the hydrogen generator cell you can hear it bubbling now and I'm really not sure uh, how long I want to wait for the hydrogen to dissipate. Within seconds, Mori wants. So I'm gonna give it like, uh, say, 10 seconds. So I'm gonna very slowly remove the brown paper, paper bag, slide it off the top, create as little turbulence as I can Okay. In three, two, one. Uh huh. What do you see? That's uh, what I expected to see. So I'm not even going to bother with the uh, the one minute test because I didn't even uh, get anything from the 10 to 15 second test. All of the hydrogen was gone as I predicted along with the mystery gas. that does not seem to exist. And uh, the next test, we'll let it fill and then sit overnight with the paper in place. I don't know if you can see this But uh, there is quite a bit of water vapor coming out. Oh, yeah, there you go. You can see it. Quite a bit of quite a bit of water vapor coming out of the uh, of the cell right now.
So I again have the hydrogen generator filling the filling the jar filling the beaker and we'll see see what happens all right the time right now is quarter past 11 in the evening on July 14, 2014, the hydrogen generator has been producing hydrogen gas and the mystery secondary gas, supposedly, uh, the hypothesized secondary gas in the beaker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit overnight tomorrow morning at around 6.30 a.m. I'm going to come down here, leave the paper in place, and I'm going to attempt to ignite it ignite the secondary gas with my gas grill igniter. You can see I already have it permanently or semi-permanently attached in place so that I can leave the paper bag in place on top. So I'm just going to leave it undisturbed overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll come back attempt to ignite what's left if there is anything left and we'll see if anything exists okay the time right now is 606 .06 a.m. Eastern Time it is almost seven hours after I shut down the hydrogen generator cell last evening filling the glass jar or the beaker with hydrogen gas and the hypothesized secondary gas. This morning I'm going to leave the paper in place. I'm going to try and uh, ignite what, what remains. My prediction is there is nothing. Uh, if I do, if we do get a pop, then I've already got my hydrogen generator cell running in the background warming up. I will refill it this morning and uh, we'll do the experiment again in total darkness. Uh, sun quite hasn't come up. It's rained last night, so it's still pretty dark outside. I'm going to shut off the lights and let's do this right now. So here we go. Secondary cast, secondary gas test number, who knows what. In three, two, one. Wow, there's a surprise. Not. Okay, that's it. So after seven hours in a uh, relatively sealed environment with the brown paper bag cover on the top of the beaker, Leaving the bag, leaving that seal in place and attempting to ignite it this morning showed that there was no combustion of any latent gas inside the beaker, as I expected. Um, my theory, and this is open to debate, is that when you have the visibly cloudy mixture inside a container. That visibly cloudy mixture is charged water vapor uh, or um, perhaps uh, even just plain water vapor because water itself is polar and 
the, the working theory that I have is that this polar water or charged water, depending on your mood or your train of thought, has enough charge on it to attract hydrogen and oxygen atoms or hydrogen and oxygen molecules and hold them in suspension along with the vapor inside whatever container that you've got until such time as you ignite it or until such time as it either evaporates or condenses to the surfaces inside the container that you're holding it in in which case the hydrogen is released and there's nothing to burn so that's it I hope we can put this myth to bed and uh, it, please do not approach me and say oh well we think you could do your experiment better by and then fill in the blank after that no I'm sorry I'm sorry this myth is busted uh, it is busted wide open, and uh, I'm not doing this anymore. So, I hope you enjoyed this this uh, ex experimental series. Um, I think we learned a lot. We learned that we don't have the secondary gas that is uh, rumored. And um, unless you want to consider the, the water vapor um, with the hydrogen attached to it as your secondary gas. What does seem to be interesting, however, and I, I will say this, what seems to be interesting is the geometry of your container. So, if you have a, a two liter soda bottle, I'm looking for my other plastic bottle here, I don't see it. I didn't blow it up yet. Whatever. If you have a, 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 a 2 liter plastic soda bottle or a 1.75 liter plastic liquor handle, <laughs> um, the, the geometry seems to play a role in how long the, um, the, the vapors are held in suspension. The, um, the vapors themselves might be energetic enough to bounce off the walls and be retained but um, a beaker with straight sides and even with a seal on it <clears throat> like this cannot retain the, uh, the vapors, not even for 10 seconds. Last evening, as you saw, when I removed the paper from the top of the beaker, what I did was I removed it very carefully very slowly and I just slid the paper across the top like this immediately stepped back and then attempted to ignite what remained and would not there's nothing the, the as soon as you remove the paper the, uh, the straight sides of the beaker the, allow the, the gases to just go and escape and uh, the hydrogen probably carries the water molecules with it in that case. So that's it. Hope you all enjoyed this. Please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And peace.